Live from the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University, here on this Monday night, another edition of the Fred McNair Radio Show and the Fred McNair Program on Facebook and online. Coming up here on this Monday night, we will recap the preview game. We'll have all the highlights, all the scores. We'll talk with Braves head football coach Fred McNair as he'll join us to break it all down for you. We'll be taking your calls, 601-877-6595. You can text a question, 601-348-7255. You can tweet a question. I'm on Twitter, Tall Man Radio. Also, we are on Sirius XM Online Channel 981 here on this Monday night. So glad you can join us. We'll talk all about the Prairie View game. We'll look ahead to Jackson State. The Braves keeping their swack Western hopes alive with a victory over Prairie View. Now we got to take care of Jackson State. We'll talk about it on the back end of the Fred McNair program. So we'll get to it after this timeout here on the Braves Sports Network. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, to the Fred McNair Show here on the Brace Sports Network, WPRL 91.7 FM, the flagship station of the Brace Sports Network, 91.7 FM, All Corn Public Radio, and WPRL.org. Also, WMIS, WTYJ in Natchez, 1240 AM, 97.7 FM, Fayette Natchez, and NatchezRadio.com. Glad you can join us. Also, we are on XM Radio tonight, channel 981, a different channel than what we had the other day 989 was that channel tonight we're on channel 981 on xm radio welcome glad you can join us here on this monday night charles edmund braves head football coach fred mcnair joining us here of course on the fred mcnair show coach mcnair how you doing man i'm doing good Tom. <laughs> doing good man i can share this uh personal story you know coach my my blood pressure is up of late I'm taking uh I'm taking readings twice a day in the morning and at night. I'm documenting when this started. And this has started these last few weeks with these close wins, these exciting games. It's running your blood pressure up. It's getting, it's getting your heart rhythm going. Uh, but, you know, you would have it no other way. It's been this way all year long. Every game has been hotly contested. It's kind of what we expected. And, you know, Cedric Bush said after the game, after that uh, that call was overturned, we win the game. The Sphinx Jinx is alive and well. And uh, for everything that happened on that final drive, Prairie View going in, in field goal range, kicked the field goal, but a fumble. And we got the football, and we won the game. What is there to say, Coach? John, I'll tell you what, uh, the effort the effort is what to say in, uh, in this football program. Uh, the, the effort these guys put together, uh, offensive defense to play this game the way they played it um, with extreme passions and um, with high expectations of going in this game and trying to get this victory no matter what uh, was in front of us. I kind of used the word tunnel vision throughout the week and uh, just kind of made sure the guys just looked forward to what was in front of them and not what was beside them and not what back behind them. Uh, just tunnel vision. Uh, there was a light at the end so uh, we used that word this week and Stay focused on what the task was at hand that was in front of us. Uh, that's what that was Prairie View. And I think the defense came out in that last drive. And Tyreek Martin, uh, it's no quit. Uh, these guys never quit. Um, and he stripped the ball from the guy and we recovered the fumble. And enough said after that. It's victory formation. So um, the guys' effort and, and, and the way they play the game, these guys never stop playing. They never quit. They could have easily gave that up. Yeah. Uh, Charles, but. Uh, the way we coach and the way we teach the young men is not to give up, play through it, and that's what they did. 
we definitely did that. And, and we look so good. You talk about championship football in November. We definitely looked that way throughout the first half, had the 31-9 to lead coach. We we look like the championship ball club. And I was been, I've been telling people all week, man, don't count these Braves out. You know, because if we don't win that game, Pravey's going to hoist that trophy on, on our field. And that's something that I didn't think was going to happen. And, you know, we looked so good for most of the game. And then Pravey made a run at it, and uh, we found a way. Well, the biggest thing was we came out and played solid ball the first half and, and, and we were able to get up uh, with a 24-9 uh, lead at the halftime, Charles, and, and that was big for us. Uh, knowing that anything could happen in the Prairie Views, they, they play off big plays, explosive plays, the way they've been playing the whole year. Uh, big, long passes and, and uh, turnovers and, and things of that nature. That's where they win their ball games. Uh, but having to just to go to length of the field and doing the things they did, um, and you take a look at, go look back to scoring, um, they had some some explosive play for scoring. Uh, that's what at least 21 points I know uh, with explosive plays. So uh, we have to make sure that we minimize the explosive plays that we did in the first half. Uh, but we came back second half and kind of had some blown coverage that didn't work for us and uh, um, and things of that nature. They was able to get those big explosive plays for from us, Charles. So let's look at the action here as uh, the Prairie View Panthers uh, went right down the field, Coach, in their first drive. Six plays, 94 yards on that first drive. Spiller, 44-yard pass uh, from pass. So let's talk about pass. He's a, he's about a running back. He's 6'6", 240, somewhere in there. I mean, he's he could be a running back or a quarterback just based on his size. How much of a handful was he out there? Well, I didn't really understand how – I didn't really know how big he was until after the game was overcharged. He, he's a big old guy. Uh, when I walked up to him and, and told him good game, and he's a big, big guy. Um, I mean, he's probably a little bit more than, than what he says is. Maybe 6'5", or 6'6", Charles. He's a, he's a big guy. Um, carries a lot of weight, and he, he carries it well. So – um, and during that first drive of six plays, 94 yards, the 44 yard touchdown pass, we had a lot of missed tackle, Charles. Uh, we had a bundle of missed tackles there. We, we I think we was in the right fit to, to make the play uh, with the tunnel scream, and we just had a lot of missed tackles on that play. Yep, and that's how the Panthers got the lead. The PAT wide left, no good. But then we responded with 13:04 left in the second quarter. This was a six-nothing game at the end of the first quarter. So in the second quarter, we responded with the LaCharles Pringle 57-yard uh, pass. It was a game of big plays, coach, and, and LaCharles Pringle got involved. A couple of big touchdowns, including that one there, to give the Braves the lead. And that's something we've been looking for for, for a few games, Charles, of some explosive big plays uh, to score quickly, uh, as we did. And great job, um, Felix, finding the Charles on that 57 yard touchdown pass there uh, to go up 7 6. Going back to the first quarter, Coach, uh, 6 0 at, at that point, at the end of the first quarter. Uh, were you concerned about just trying to get it going in the first? Yeah, the biggest thing was we always talk about fast start, Charles, and and uh, the biggest thing uh, we didn't we didn't really score in the first quarter, um, which wasn't which wasn't a big deal because we always gonna make those long drives, and uh, I think that's what we ended up doing uh, part of that second quarter, making that long drive, um, that five play sixty nine yards with that pass from um, from Felix to Harp, from Felix to um, Pringle. Preview's defense for all the points that they've scored and everything they've done offensively, they were top three defense in a lot of categories of guys that, you know, single handedly with interceptions and sacks. You know, that's been kind of what Coach Dooley's been missing over the years. They he can create an offense, but the defense has been the issue. What was it about their defense? Even though, you know, we scored thirty one points, that was in the second and third quarter. What was it about their defense overall? They was good up front, uh, with Dumas and um and Troy James up front. They did two tackles that played very well and, and uh they had a good linebacker core that, that flows pretty good. Uh, in the secondary we, we kinda mixed the match and kinda got them out of sync there, uh, with our passing concept that we what we was running. Um, but up front, that's where they control things up front. Um, and Dumas didn't have no sacks this game, Charles. That was big. I think Coach Radden and the offensive line, they did an outstanding job of, of opening up gaps for our players to run in and, and also protecting Phoenix, you know, in the process. So uh, I think what we did up front as far as the offensive line was protection-wise is, is move, move the line a little bit and, and get, get us in the right situation to, to, to protect Phoenix on the pass. All right, so with that uh, LaCharles Pringle 57-yard touchdown pass from Felix Harper was 7-6 to six at that point. Then the Panthers responded with a field goal to make it 9-7. to seven. And then we responded. Uh, talk about the job that, that your field goal kickers have done 
so far this season is hand out with a field goal to make it a 10-9 game. He's been solid the whole season, Charles, and, and the reason I, I went with two kickers is kind of take pressure off one guy, you know, just give one guy one duty. Uh, and that's what I gave Christoph uh, Thompson um, his duty just to be the kickoff guy. And uh, I found out Noah can really, really kick the ball as well as he's been doing. Um, you know, he got a limitation of what, how far he can kick, but he's been doing an outstanding job with extra points in the short field goals that we've been giving him. Um, so he's an outstanding guy, very manable uh, player, uh, very respectful guy. And I have fun with him all the time during the course of practice with all the specialist guys, uh, the holders, the, the punter, the kickers, and just to have a conversation with him just to make his skin tough a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you, you always – those those guys, those kickers, punters, they're all kind of off to themselves. And, and you were telling me during camp they're really, really funny. Uh, what, what, I mean, they what they just joke around a lot. What what makes them so funny? It, it, it's just, it's amazing, Charles. When when they when they together, you know, you can just see them and just watch them. How much fun that they're having doing their doing their job of working uh, the kicks and the place and the ball and and ball placement. But just as soon as I I call them all up to me, it's like they don't have anything to say now. You know, it's like they. They wonder what Coach Mack gonna say to them, you know. But I, well, I'm an encouraging coach and and trying to get them to do the right thing. But they're 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 very they're very creative in things that they do, and um, you know they're they're special, um, and and they need they need to be bonded too. And and this team loves them all, uh, Charles. You know we we take them all in and and uh, and just really loves them up and um, and things of that nature. But they're they're great guys. Well, we had a 10-9 lead, and then we went on a run, Coach. 24 points second quarter. Uh, we added to the lead on a Stafford Anderson two-yard run to make it 17 to nine, and then Griffin getting the tight ends involved, 24 to nine. So a terrific second quarter, Coach. 24 to three, we outscored the Panthers in the second quarter, and that was Braves football. Yes, it was, Charles, and that's putting that's putting points on the board and and uh, separating yourself from from the opposition, you know, too, as well. You know, being able to score points and in, in those fashion with the tight ends and and um, with Felix ten yard run, just a lot of stuff that you have to defend uh, when you got stuff like that on the table as an offense. So um, I think we did a, a pretty good job of, of putting points up in the second quarter. Yeah, in that second quarter. We had that 18-yard drive, and it was set up by a block punt by Griffin. Talk about that play. I tell you what, uh, Coach Powell has been, he, he's done an outstanding job with the special teams um, throughout this whole year. I think just about every game we have a block punt. Um, you know, just about every game that we've been playing in, we had a um, – the, the, the PBR team has blocked the punt. Um, I think uh, Truck Griffin did a great job of getting his hands in and, and blocking the punt. That's just the fact that he was being blocked and didn't give up and uh, and put his hands in and made the block punt. Uh, and we recovered, and then next play, you know, next two or three plays, we scored a touchdown. So he made it 24 to, to 9 at that point at the break. We got a field goal uh, late in the first half. And at halftime, coach, it was 24 to 9. So what was the spill? What was the speech to your team at halftime at that point? You know, the biggest thing is, like I told them all week, and just tell them, just go out and finish. Uh, go out and finish what we started. And, um, you know, these guys, they're they very good at, at doing what they do, Charles, and, and um, don't have to say much. And, 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 you know, I got them up after halftime when we went on the field after half uh, to stretch a little bit, and I get them back up. And they said, we know, Coach. We know, Coach. You know, we know. And I, I didn't say anything else then. Um, and they know what I was going to say, you know, but um, they just those guys just take it upon themselves to, to know what I'm thinking as a coach and um, understanding what we got to do to finish this ball game. So the Braves at the half led 24 to 9. Let's go to the phone lines here on the Fred McNair program. Glad you could join us. Marquise joining us on this Monday night. Good evening, Marquise. How you doing? How you doing, Charles? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How you doing, Coach? Please? What's going on, Marquise? Hey, I'm like scared of them. <laughs> they always scare me, Marquis, you know? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I got a question. Uh -huh. uh, I had some, some, some on Facebook, and y'all got another, another bad quarterback. Yeah, we um, I tell you what, Marquise, we 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 prone to grow them in, and uh, I think the guys we got in now backing up Felix is gonna come in and do a great job, you know. Hopefully after he leave, and and we just gonna keep flowing with the flow, man. We 
we quarterback country out here just about, man. So we got some good guys that's behind Felixton that we expect to come in and make an impact on us uh, in the next upcoming season. Are you talking about quarterback or running back? Because I, I did post oh, something. Quarterback. quarterback? Okay. I saw it on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. All right, Marquise, we appreciate you calling in, man. We appreciate it. All right. We're going to take this time out here. We'll look at the second half highlights. Some interesting calls, Coach. Some interesting spots in terms of certain situations on third and short and fourth down. And, of course, that play at the end, the fumble. We'll talk about that. And taking your calls and texts and tweets as well. Uh, we'll look at Jackson State. Obviously, they won the East with a big win over Southern University. Come from behind fashion. So we'll talk about Coach Sanders' team on the back end of the Fred McNair program as it continues after this. COVID-19 has changed how we stomp the yard and feel the beat. How we stroll. How we step. How we show our pride. Now it's time to take the first step that lets us get back to strolling instead of scrolling. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts. As COVID-19 vaccines become available, you may have questions. Is it safe? Should I get it? Is it free? It's okay to have questions. Now get the facts about COVID-19 vaccines at GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision for yourself and for your family. You're on XM Satellite Radio, Channel 981 tonight, and all broadcast and coaches shows will be on XM. And uh, we appreciate uh, the approval of Alcorn President Dr. Felicia M. Nave and Interim Athletics Director Cyrus Russ for putting that uh, together for us. We had the women's game on satellite radio yesterday and, of course, the game and uh, all of broadcast and coaches shows going forward. Big basketball game uh, Friday night at the Whitney Arena. The Lady Braves will host Southeast Louisiana. That'll be on the Braves Sports Network. All right, so, Coach, let's look at the third quarter. We led 24-9 to and then extended that advantage. Um, talk about some of the penalties, Coach. You know, we, won't, we don't talk about it that much the last few weeks, but we did have some uh, penalties, and there was one on that drive in which we eventually scored that kind of set us back behind the chains a little bit. Well, you know, I think I think I think the the, the penalty part charge is something that that we look at as a, as a coaching staff and, and and try to get the insight of of every penalty that's been played, that's been thrown on us, and um, you know, and it's gonna happen, and it's gonna happen. Um, you know, the, that that penalty there, you know, we thought that that was a penalty that, that may have, may cost us um, in that drive, uh, but we was able to come back and, and and finish that drive, Charles. Yeah, I mean, it was a false start. Um, and that pushed us to second and 14 from our 20. So Pringle with a 25-yard catch to recover from that penalty. But then we eventually scored Felix Harper 10-yard run. And at that point, Coach, it was 31-9. to You know, you always worry about coming out of the locker room. You want to keep that same level intensity going. How would you assess that this season? Coming out of the locker room, regardless of what the score is, picking up the intensity, picking up where you left off and being productive early in the third quarter. You know, going into going into the going into the half, you kinda get like a two for one deal uh charge. If you score before the half and you come back out and get the ball and score score again, I think that's what we kinda realized that, that we had to do coming out of halftime was to make sure that we take the opening drive and go down the field and score points. Um I think that that was big for us there. Um going down and score that touchdown right after halftime. Well, the Rays led 31 to 9. 10 27 left in the third quarter. The Panthers got the football at the 25 yard line. They had a third down and six, but we were called for a face mask that kept the drive alive. And then the Panthers would score. That was a tough penalty right there, Coach. That that face mask that uh, brought it to the Braves' uh, 29 yard line, and then they scored after that. It was charged. It was it was a tough penalty. And the guy trying to make a tackle and, and just grabs the face mask. Uh, I think that was McGee on that play. Um, just grabs the face mask, putting forth the effort to make a play. And uh, we made the play, but he just he had, had the face mask that that gave him a first down there. And then they then they had a fourth down and 11. 
and then pass to Mullins for 30 yards and a touchdown. So, Coach, not only did they get the first down, but they got the touchdown to Mullins. Yeah, big play um, in coverage-wise. I think that, that we had somebody that is supposed to have that guy coming out um, in coverage and, and blowing that coverage at Charles. Um, was big and fourth down. We get a, get a chance to get off the field and and possibly go down and, and, and punch this thing in again, Charles. But we had a blown coverage there. So it was thirty-one to sixteen going into the fourth quarter, Coach. So you know, I thought maybe a play or two away from maybe putting it away. But then the Panthers they just found a way to hang hang around. Talk about the offense, Coach. This Prairie View offense that that we're dealing with. They're scoring a bunch of points. They've got a Louisville transfer quarterback. They've got Brooks, who's a Grambling transfer. The offense, as you compare this year's Dooley's offense to what we've seen in the past, well, how, uh, kind of the same system, just just different pieces? I mean, it's the same system, Charles, just more explosive players. And that's the biggest difference. When you got those big-time players like that, that's quarterback and pass, and, uh, and Brooks at the running back spot. So you, you got some dynamic players that can make some plays um, week in and week out. And that's the big thing about them. They, they, they big on the explosive plays. That's what they live off of, and, and that's what they do. Uh, so each opportunity that we have, we have to limit, eliminate those big plays and, and not give up the big plays, the explosive plays that we talk about, the long plays. So it's 31-16 to 16 going into the fourth quarter as we get into the fourth. 14-47 remaining. The Panthers got the football at their 31-yard line, and they were able to score on an Antoine three-yard touchdown run that made it 31-23. to 23. And that was a huge drive there, 69-yard drive, Coach. Talk about that drive that kind of got the Panthers back in the game. It was a long-lasting drive there, Charles. You know, we had a couple of plays that we thought we could get off the field on, and they made big third-down conversion on that on that drive. So, um, you know, third-down conversion is our is our thing. You know, offense and defense, we have to be able to get off the field on third downs. And uh, in no case in that drive, we didn't we didn't get off the field. You're right, because they had a third and seven from their 44, and a third and four from our 18, and so they were able to keep the drives alive and score. It made it 31 to 23 at that point in the game with 10 and a half left. So we get the football coach, 31-23, 10 and a half minutes left. And this is one of the plays I talked about before the break. Uh, we got the football at the 25-yard line. We had a third and four from our 31 and a pass to Bowler for three yards. It was reviewed and it was ruled short. Now I saw the replay of it. It looked like the ball crossed the 35, which would have been a first down. Uh, talk about that particular play, Coach. I, I thought clearly you know, he got the first down beyond the sticks. We all thought the same thing too, Charles, just looking at it from the bird's eye. And um, I, I was clearly convinced that he had the first down on that play. Um, but they reviewed it and saw other. I, I couldn't see no other angle they could see to, to, to overturn that call uh, to be short. Um, just kind of disappointing that play there, that call, um, to where it didn't give us a first down. All right, so Prairie View got the football with 9.02 left as you had to punt. They got it at the 18-yard line. And then, before you know it, a big play pass to Spiller for 70 yards. Talk about that play. Yeah, again, Charles, we, 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 we in cover three. We're not supposed to jump anything. Just sit back and let it rock and let it work itself out. But our, our defensive back came up on the, on the stutter and go. Uh, all we got to do is sit back. And hopefully the quarterback threw it to our Thought to our guy was coming down on the coverage, and um, but the the corner bit up on a on a play that he should have just stayed back in coverage, and and they were able to get by us on that play for a big big touchdown game. Thirty one to twenty nine at that point, we got the football with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Got it at our thirty yard line and couldn't get much done with that drive. Coach took up a minute and forty two seconds. Talk about what you were trying to accomplish there. I mean, obviously trying to chew up some clock a little bit, maybe push them back, uh, you know, pin them back. Talk about that drive. With seven minutes left, we started at our 30. It was kind of tough. You kind of you kind of stuck between the rock and the hard place on that one, Charles, because they, they start pack, packing the box in to where you couldn't really run. Uh, we outnumbered by the hats on, in, in the running game, so we tried to throw some throw some intermediate passages, trying to back them up a little bit and open up a little bit inside. So uh, we weren't able to do that, so we had a couple of completions that that we thought could get us uh, a first down, um, but we missed opportunities on no on no passes. So the Panthers got the football with 518 left, and coach, you talked about the third down conversions. So with 518 left, 
The Panthers got the football at the 34-yard line. They were faced with a third down and five and pass complete to Spiller for eight yards. That moves the chains. Then on a second and 11, uh, Stewart for four yards. That made it third and seven. Then a five-yard completion made it fourth down and two, Coach. Fourth and two from a 45-yard line. And they pick up a three-yard run for the first down. Talk about that fourth and two play. I mean, it was a big play. I knew they was going to run run inside, and that's what they did. Uh, I guess they just bowled their neck up, and um, we couldn't stop from picking up that first down, Charles, on that fourth and two, which would have been a great opportunity for us to get off the field on fourth down. So then Antoine with an 11-yard rush that put – the ball at the brace 31 and then you call a timeout there coach with 151 left well just thinking in terms of um that play we just have enough time on the clock uh, we can stop them to a field goal we we'll have we we'll have some time left on the clock to to, to, try, to try to drive down and and uh, and get a score back but you know they they picked up another first down and and i kind of held that one that one timeout that was ahead just in case they were gonna kick a field goal just to ice the kicker a little bit so then Antoine, after the timeout, a four-yard run, and then another timeout that you called with 123 left. So you obviously knew what Prairie View was trying to do. They were trying to milk it down to the final seconds, and you were just trying to preserve time. Oh, exactly. And, and, and then they got in a situation where they, they picked up another first down, and, and kind of with one timeout left, I had no other choice but let the clock run and, and try to hold that timeout to ice to kick it down. So as we fast forward to third and six from the Braves' 16-yard line. Uh, Stewart's run of two yards. It was a fumble, and Barfield recovered. The ruling on the field was that he was down, and so they had to go and look at it, and it was overturned. It was a fumble. And the Braves got the football and obviously ran out the clock. Talk about that play, Coach, and we're looking at it, and because I've been wrong on some of the, the calls, the reviews and all that, I just had to sit back and wait because it was it was hard to tell. What, what were you thinking as the officials were looking and going under further review? He was never down. I mean, the ball came out before he was down. He was never down. He was standing up when the ball came out. The only thing I could see where they had forward progress stop and wish the whistle never blowed uh, to stop forward progress. So the ball was out before he even went down. So it was a kind of a play that we had on our goal line. We was going in and uh, they, picked, uh, they picked our player up at the one yard line and don't stop forward progress. And they bagged us up to about the four after we fumbled the ball and recovered. And so I kind of played my, 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 heart, my hands that way to where they had to understand that the call they made on us with the same call they're trying to make now with forward progress. So uh, just using that task and, uh, you know, getting them to look at it. And the ball was clearly out before the whistle blow. Yeah. And, you know, there's some pictures out there on social media. I mean, some of the Prairie View photographers that was at the game try to freeze frame it and show it otherwise. But, I mean, it's it's really hard to tell. It's, it's really hard to say. Nonetheless, the, you got the win. And, uh you know, talk about those last 18 seconds. What was going through your mind there? Because clearly you knew what Prairie View was trying to do. And, and for me, I was thinking, well, they were just trying to get the ball in the middle of the field for the short field goal attempt. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know what they were trying to do. <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I, I had no clue uh, what they were trying to do with the with the, with the the field and, and move the ball to with a hash. And, and you know, at that time, I'm thinking, I'm sure this dude just finna just call timeout and bring the field goal team on and kick the field goal, you know. And that's what I was thinking. But for what they was thinking, I had no <laughs> idea, you know, in terms of that. But, um, but you know, we, we played with effort there at that last play. And uh, like I said, Tyreek Martin was able to go in and, and punch and script the ball out. Uh, and and um, Barfield was, was able to, to get up with the fumble. So uh, great effort, great opportunity for us to to stay alive here at Charles and uh, just kind of take care of business this coming weekend. Talk about those those two young men uh, in terms of what they've done for the defense. I tell you what, uh, Tyreek Martin had been kind of steady at play. Uh, he was hurt for a while, and he came back after a couple of games, missed out. Uh, Barfield has stepped up in in terms of Solomon Wise not playing and played some tough defensive end for us. But uh, you know, we, we we're still banged up a little bit, and we're gonna try to piece this thing together. We can go to Jackson and put up a good bar, a good brand of football on the football field. So uh, we got a chance now, and so we just gonna take advantage of every opportunity that we have during the course of the week to get our guys healthy. We're going to take a break right here. We'll go inside the numbers, talk a little about this game, put it in our rearview mirror, and uh, we'll get ready for Jackson State coming up. So we'll take this time out here on the Fred McNair program. We'll be back after this time out.
Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. Here on the Fred McNair program, glad you can join us however way you might be checking us out on Facebook Live, on Satellite Radio, on the Braves Sports Radio Network. Glad you can join us here on this Monday night. We'll be on the air at 1230 for the Braves big game against Jackson State. The scenario is quite simple, ladies and gentlemen. The Braves have to win on Saturday to have a chance. Prairie View plays Texas A&M in College Station Saturday at 11 a.m. And they play Mississippi Valley next Saturday at Panther Stadium. The Braves need to win this game and make the West not be decided till the end of the month. And that's exactly what the case will be. All right, Coach, uh, let's get to uh, inside the numbers a little bit. But I know one of the questions I was asked uh, the last couple of days, I was in Starkville last night uh, doing Lady Braves basketball with uh, Mississippi State, and someone was uh, talking to me about the game. And they're saying, you know, in the third quarter, when we had the the big lead, you know, that this individual felt like things kind of changed in terms of our aggression, in terms of adding to like putting the game away in the third quarter when it was uh, what it was. You know, we were up 31-9 to nine at, at one point, had a chance to really put the game away. Do you feel like you, some people feel like we might have been a little conservative a little bit that third quarter? I don't ever get conservative in the ball game, Charles. I ever do that. Uh, I want to put this team in the best position to win the game. Uh, in terms of that, when we got a we got a good defensive uh, team as such a prayer view, you don't want to be in too quick of a hurry to make a call and it's not the right call and get stuffed. And um, in terms of that, so yes, I think what we did was we try to make the call to where we try to check and see what kind of defensive front they was going to be in where they moving, and uh, putting the, putting our guys in the best place uh, to be successful on the next play. But uh, being conservative is something I don't ever do. I'm trying to score every possession. So, um, no, I'm not a conservative person in terms of trying not to score. And one of the things that, that I, I, when I call a game, I call it scanning. I think that's the right phrase for it. You get to the line of scrimmage, the play is called in, and then all the skilled players look over at the sideline. I call that a scan. And you see it all over the country. It's done by, by every team. Talk a little bit about, about that. We haven't talked about that at all uh, in terms of how that changes the, the dynamic of things. It's no different what other teams do, Charles. You see on TV, they're doing the exact same thing. Uh, what they're trying to do is make sure that if the defensive front going to move or the secondary going to rotate either way or, or whether they, they going to rotate strong or rotate weak or the front going to slide and go into another uh, front, that's what they're trying to do. So they want to make sure if that's if that's the case, they want to get a good play uh, to fit that front, to fit that secondary coverage. So everybody does that. It's not a conservative move on on nobody and what they're doing uh, uh, in SEC, the ACC, the whatever conference you want to call it. But it's the same thing. Yeah, they're doing the exact same thing. All right, let's go to the phone lines. This is our friend Cedric Foster calling in from Tallahassee, Florida. Good evening, Cedric. How are you on this Monday night? Doing pretty good. And uh, you doing okay, Coach? I'm doing good, man. I can't be doing I, no better right now. I put a, I put a uh, comment on the uh, Alcorn State International Alumni. I'm still screaming <laughs> from that game Saturday. But... But I, I want to say this. I'm, I've been listening and continue to listen. But I, I, I did watch that um, Southern and Jackson State game, and I've watched another Jackson State game. I noticed, Coach, Jackson State don't have a strong running game. Uh, I noticed that uh, Sanders is the one that takes off and runs. I don't know how many – Yards he rushed for Saturday night, but boy, I tell you, between him uh, running and throwing them bombs down the field down there, I I, I know you uh, scheming for that because he will take off and run. I noticed that. And you're absolutely right, uh, uh, Kermit. And, and, and things that he do, uh, he's been doing it 
the whole season uh, with that. So um, I don't think the the running game is, is quite as tough as as what people say. Uh, but he, he's got a strong arm, and he's gonna launch it down the field to those big tall receivers he got, and just make him make a play. And that's one thing that we talked about uh, this morning our team meeting. And we just got to we got to make plays. We got to make that play when it's up in there. Well, okay, coach. You're right about that because I know he has one receiver. That boy, I think he's what he's about six five. Six five. Like he just throws it over there and he come up with it. That's exactly right. Okay, coach. Uh, go Braves. Yes, sir. Go Braves. All right, Cedric Foster. Thank you very much for the phone call, Cedric Foster, calling in uh, from Tallahassee. All right, let's go inside the numbers, coach. You always look at, you know, the third down conversions. As you look at the individual numbers, Coach Felix Harper, 18 of 28, 263, two touchdowns, long of 57. Talk about the running game, Coach, 120 yards uh, running the football. Uh, Stafford Anderson with 60, Nico Duffy with 34. Talk about the running game because we know everything is predicated on our ability to run the football. So how would you assess that as we average 3.2 yards per carry? It was solid, Charles, but, you know, we, I think we still left some things out on the table as far as our rushing, um, um, missing some gaps on it. And uh, and those explosive plays we talked about, you know, we're still having some of those. And I think the I think with Prairie, you got to take the hats off to Prairie, what they did up front too as well. They had some pretty good, decent uh, guys up front. Uh, to kind of to kind of stuff us in some of those areas, so we had to continue to continue to try to run the ball as well. Uh, we just can't go into one dimension where we just kind of pass all the time. So I think we did a pretty good job of of offsetting everything to where we can have um, a real balanced um, offense. Yeah, Felix Harper, 18 of 28. I want to ask you about one. I know we try to get the ball out on the, on the sidelines, these, these out routes and curl curl routes. Some of those balls were kind of sailing behind uh, receivers, Boulder and some of the others. Talk about those particular square outs, if if you will. Well, the biggest thing is just kind of get those two back on the same page, Charles. I think they we have some missed opportunities uh, with him and uh, Felix connecting. Uh, one down on our sideline, um, the deep ball, and I thought that we could go up and make a play on that ball. Um, and then one on their sideline that that I thought that Philly just had to put it on him, but he would expect him to do something else. But just being on the same page as, as quarterback and receivers, it was a big thing. I think Coach Phillips and uh, Coach Gray talked about that earlier uh, this morning, uh, getting them back on the same page. It might have been yesterday afternoon during the, during the coach staff meeting uh, to where they got to get those guys back on the same page and, and doing some explosive stuff that they used to doing. Let's go back to the phone lines. Kermit joining us here on the Fred McNair program. Good evening, Kermit. How are you? I'm doing fine, Charles. Good afternoon. And, and, and how you doing, Coach McNair? I'm doing good, man. I want to congratulate you on your win on Saturday. And uh, just got two observations and one question I wanted to ask you. Uh -huh. Coach, I didn't know our team was as young as it is. I didn't, when, you know, when you marked the seniors out there for senior day, I thought we were an old team. <laughs> uh, we're a really young team, so kind of have to praise these guys for what they're doing right now. Yeah, they were so young. What I want to ask you, Coach, is uh, I, I know this coaching thing is a fraternity. What do you think about uh, Coach Fobbs getting terminated today? Well, you know what? Uh, I just found that out probably about 20 minutes ago, and uh, some of the coaches was filling me in on that, and uh, and my hats off to Coach Favre, the job he's done down there at Grambling, man. He's he's been a tremendous coach, and uh, just in our just in our conversation that we have when we go to media day, um, he's gonna be successful. And you know, it's, a, it's like I say, it's a business, and and sometimes it just don't work out for you. Sometimes, and I and like I said, he'll he'll get another job somewhere, um, and he, he'll be successful doing that. And like I say, you know, it, it's all predicated on what we what we have as 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 a job and the things that we're trying to do with these young men. Is try to raise them to the right way and educate them, and and also get them to play hard on Saturday. So, you know, it's it's, it's a cultural deal, and to where we have to bring them up and, and and build our own type of coach as far as a football program, as well. So, you know, um, I just found out about 20 minutes ago uh, from one of the other coaches that uh, grabbing that part away with uh, Coach Farb down there. Well, Coach, good luck to you this weekend, Jack. All right, thank you, sir. All right, uh, Kermit, we appreciate it. Um, and it is, and a former coach told me this is, and you, you know this as well, and every head coach knows this is a results-oriented business. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's something, Charles, that, that, that it's almost like when, you, when you're when you in a business and, and, and you're not doing your job and, you, and your owners are watching you and you're not making production. So, um, 
as to where that you have to have that meeting. Uh, but I think like I said, you know, since Coach Farr been there, he he's won some championships, uh, uh, some swag championships, been to the Celebration Bowl, and and um, and did some good good things down there at Grambling. You know, just so happened, like I said, just it's, it's a business part of it, and you know, uh, like I said, you know, he's he's a great coach, and and he'll land somewhere and uh, continue to coach football as his passion. He just rebuilt that offense, just tore it down from the ground up. The offensive line coach, coordinator, quality control coach. He brought in Coach Marty, you know, a very good uh, JUCO coach with exotic schemes on offense. Um, and so you got the freshman quarterback, Bowden, there, and you just kind of felt like if they could just turn the corner. Uh, but that loss to Cookman probably was the final nail. And, you know, uh, it's just – it's tough. There's a lot of pieces, Charles. There's a lot of pieces yeah. that goes uh, along with the puzzle, man. And – and you know, and just to put those pieces in the right place, you know, you having a good coaching staff and and having a good recruiting class, it's a lot of things that goes into into what you try to do as a head coach, and and um, you know, just to get those things that you need to to be successful as a head coach, it means a lot to to the program as well. So, um, you know, it, it's just it's just a thing that that we go through as head coaches, and um, it's our job to 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 make this boat keep floating and um and so we have to do that and, and and understanding that we have to have the things that we need to to keep that boat floating too charles so um just understand that part too but um it's a business charles it's a business talk about floating the boat the defense floated the boat and it had a sail off into the sea with a victory you talk about uh, defensively individually uh heron with 12 tackles jawan taylor with nine uh chairless with nine you know, just talk talk to me, Coach, about the pieces that you've had. You talk about the pieces fitting. How much juggling have you had to do with this defense in terms of the number of guys, talk, starting with Edgeton going out with a knee injury for the season? Just share with us, and I've been asked this as well, all the moving pieces and, and all the stuff you've had to deal with on the defensive side of the ball. That's a lot goes into it, Charles. And I, and I take this kid – uh, Nikhil Haroon. Charles, he's a he's a walk-on kid. He's an ag major, graduated, and come back to play for his, for his sixth year due to the COVID uh, year. Uh, this kid is tremendous. And I had a conversation with him this morning, and I said, Nikhil, I man, I man, you 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 play with passion, uh, and I, I'm honest with the I'm, I'm honest with the guys every day I talk to him, and I said, I wish I had 25 more of you, Haroon. Um, with just a little bit more talent because this kid puts into it, Charles. He puts in everything that he can to be successful uh, on the football field. And, and he's going to try with every grain of his effort to, to make the call they need to make and, and make a play. And he played played extremely hard this past game against Preview. Uh, ending up with 12 tackles, so, uh, but it's just the piece of charge that goes along with it, and my hat's off to Coach Thornton and the defensive staff of trying to navigate this whole situation where we had injuries. Uh, I don't think we start with the same front uh, since the Central game. Uh, we don't had guys out uh, throughout the whole course of of this year uh, on the defensive side of the ball, and and now we had a we played a walk on freshman from Port Gibson and Demaris Hicks at corner. Started the whole played the whole game, and this a walk on freshman. Um, started at corner this past game against Preview, and played exceptionally well. Um, you know, those type things. Uh, we didn't play with two corners this week. Uh, DJ Travis <laughs> played the other corner, and and Hicks played the the other corner. So you talking about uh, effort that these guys put into it, and, and and the things that they do in terms of this defense and and the way we've been been banged up and, and trying to get guys back to play. You know, it says a lot about that defense and, and the defensive staff and how they've been trying to to put these pieces together and not having the same nucleus on the field at the same time that we had early in the year. And early in the season, the defense was really playing well. The offense was kind of, you know, we talked about it early in the season, just the offense kind of coming around a little bit, but the defense was really making big plays. The Grambling game, getting off the field twice, and then you, you look at the Southern game, uh, 38 points. You look at Bethune-Cookman over 30 points, and then you look at Prairie View, but then you talk about the injuries. I know you don't make excuses about it, but just trying to move the chess pieces around to make it all fit. I know, is it hard on the defensive side or offensive side of the ball when you have pieces out? 
it's tough on the defense side, I think, Charles, to where now you got to get these guys to understand the concept of what they're doing on offense. There's a lot of stuff going on in the course of an offense with motion formations and, and getting these guys to understand uh, with this formation, we make this call with a with a motion this way, it's another call. It's, it's kind of tough on the defense with a lot of guys coming in and out to where you get to get them to understand uh, the calls and, and what we're trying to do uh, as a defense. So uh, I think it's more tough on the defense to, to kind of put pieces together where where everybody's on the same page. And, and if you're not used to playing with somebody and communicate with them on the field at the same time, Charles, it's a lot goes on uh, with that in terms of what they're going to absorb and what they can't absorb in that situation. So a lot of stuff like, you know, the blown coverage and stuff like that, it's a lot that factors into that. Uh, but if they understand what we're trying to get them to do, if they just understand the, the concept of the coverage and things of that nature, they'll be fine. Uh, but, you know, just blowing the coverage just, to, just don't make sense in terms of a lot of things that we're doing. It's just so simple yeah. if they just do their job. We'll take a break here. We're going to do our job here and take a break. When we come back, we'll get to the text and tweets, and we'll look ahead to Jackson State. We'll get to that after this timeout on the Fred McNair Show. Auckland State University was founded in 1871 by the state of Mississippi in efforts to educate the newly freed slaves. Alcorn is the first public historically black land grant institution in the United States and the second oldest state supported institution of higher learning in Mississippi. Founded in 1871, uh, named after James L. Alcorn by Hiram Revels, who served as the first president. It was originally called Alcorn AM. We have a lot of great people that's come from Alcorn. You got Megger Wiley Evers, you have Donald Driver, Steve McNair, Merle Evers, who is my soror. We have just a bunch of people, Alex Haley, and um, who of course wrote Roots. So it's a lot of rich history here. We're one of the first institutions in the United States for, that was geared for black people, or as we call it, an HBCU. So that's really a great accomplishment. Program uh, just got a tweet that just came in, Coach, about our corners. You just talked about the corners. Where are the uh, our other corners, the other corners that we have, where they banged up as well? Yes, uh, we got. Um, Eddie Thomas, he got banged up in the in the course of the uh, the Bethune game. Um, um, there's, a, there's some more guys out too as well. Uh, Charge that, that that's not that's um, Kevante Key been out ever since the ever since the uh, Central game. So we're looking at guys now, Charge that, that we're trying to <laughs> just trying to just figure out a way how we're gonna gonna make this thing match. But but we're gonna make it we're gonna make it work. I think Coach Thornton done a great job of, of, of putting the pieces together where we can kind of interchange guys. But um, those two guys that played this past week did a great job for us, uh, with the exception of the blown coverage with the touchdown. Um, but we just got to just find guys and, and make sure we they understand uh, the concept of the coverage and the thing that they need to do. All right, let's go to the text line, 601-348-7254. Coach, uh, Texas come in. Uh, why, when we're on the half yard line, we don't get under center? Well, the biggest thing is about that. Um, you know, everybody know what you're gonna do up on the center. Uh, we try to keep everything to where we can kind of like have options and other than and then doing that. But uh, I think what we do in, in the pistol and the shotgun, uh, we does well. And uh, a lot of things we're not used to doing. We can't do it. But but during the victory formation, we do get up on the center. And that's the only time. So um, it's not something that we, we normally do. Um, a lot of teams does it um, just for a quarterback sneak. But what I think with our concept, what we're trying to do in the running game, we get first down to. Uh, another comment we talked about it earlier uh, in that third quarter we're playing not to lose instead of playing to win we can't run the clock out in the third quarter got to stay aggressive to make up for the injuries on defense you you talked about that the injuries on defense and you talked about that that third quarter just how you stay aggressive all the time there is no sitting on it if you will no nah, there's no sitting on it if i could find somebody to tell me how to run the football uh with a seven-man box with, with with just five offensive linemen you know i'm, I'm more open to to suggestions you know <laughs> so you know until i find out that we're going to continue to do what we do as an offense and try to move the chain. Uh, a comment, Coach, from the text line. Congratulations, Coach. No one expected us to beat Prairie View except those folks in, in that locker room, Coach. You, you talked about it, and I talked to you on Thursday. 
I just saw a level of focus in you and really the team and just you know how you, you play with the heart of a champion in a situation like this. Your back is against the wall. You know what's at stake if you don't get it done. Just got to find a way to get it done, and that's what we're able to do. And that's right, Charles. It's just plain and simple. You know, these kids know um, that in, in that locker room is them. You know, and that's that's the only thing that really matters. And then and what we do on the football field. We go out on the football field, like I said, tunnel vision. You have to block everything out because everything you're not hearing is good. Uh, so we stay focused and do what we have to do in terms of that locker room and the coaching staff. Uh, everything else take care of itself, Charles. And uh, and these guys, they understand Coach McNair and his philosophy uh, in terms of when he say something, you know, take it take it to the heart. You know, it's, it's going to be that way. Um, Alexis Smith with a couple of tweets on the Twitter feed. Uh, you talked about it, I think, a little bit. You know, what has changed on defense compared to the way we're playing the first half of the season? I think we talked about that. The last three games has been uh, challenging, to uh, say the least. And you, you talked about it, all the pieces, you know, having to make the calls and having to put people in in different positions. You talked about Demarius Hicks. You know, he was a running back. And I, I saw his picture on social media, and uh, I – I, when he was recruited, was he recruited as a running back, or did you just had to convert him to the defensive he, side? He was, he was recruited as an athlete, Charles. And, and the thing was, you know, we watched him on film, and we watched him play DB, we watched him play quarterback, we watched him throw the ball, we watched him run the ball, and he's just an athlete. And and um and and I can contest that, and, you know, and Coach Thorne and I we talked about it uh, earlier. Um, you know, he had come a long way, Charles. Uh, this is one kid that really didn't know how to do a back paddle uh, and things of that nature. But this kid done, done learned a whole lot of things that, that it takes to be a winner. And I think that progress that he's made uh, from the time he came on campus up until his start yesterday um, on Saturday it has made a big jump. And he looked good out there on the football field. And he can run. So when you recruit, and I know we're kind of – we haven't talked about it a lot with the recruiting cycle, what's going on right now. And you, and you see – on paper, when you recruit guys as a running back, a DB, a quarterback, then you see ATH, short for athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, what what does that does that mean that they can that you can move them around? You can play them at multiple spots. What what does that mean? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is, Charles. Just like Demaris Hicks, and and um, he's just an athlete. He he, he can play in a position. He he can run the ball, and that's just what he is. I mean, and until he get until we get him on campus, that's what we'll recruit him as an athlete. Until we get him on campus, uh, then he have to make a decision of whether he want to be a, a offensive player or a defensive player in terms of that. Uh, but I think he 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 found his niche and to where he's gonna be a, a good defensive back. All right, we're going to take a break right here. We're going to talk about some other news and notes and jump right into the Jackson State preview. That's what you want to know. What's going to take for us to beat Jackson State? They've already wrapped up the Eastern Division. This, team, this JSU team's been battle-tested after the big win. I think their biggest win of the year was against Alabama A&M. But they've had some tough games since that time, including the game against Southern on Saturday, in which they were 10 down in one of the toughest places to play in this conference at A.W. Mumford Stadium. So we'll talk about that coming up. And uh, we'll get to some, some interesting stuff here on the campus the last few days. The Marino Castle Tribute. And, of course, the Safe Center here on campus, named after the late Steve and Michelle McNair. We'll get Coach's thoughts on that after this. Time out here on the Fred McNair Show. America, land of the free. It's at the core of who we are. Freedom. The freedom to live without fear. To drive through all 50 states. To sleep safely in our own beds. The freedom to jog where we please to watch birds in the park, to wear a hoodie, the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because no matter your religion, gender, disability, age, race, all lives can't matter until black lives matter. back to the Fred McNair program. Glad you could join us here on the Braves Sports Network. All right, Coach, uh, it was a very, very festive uh, last 72 hours uh, on this campus. This past Thursday, the late, great Marino Kasim was honored with a special program in the Black and Gold Room on campus as Alcorn State University celebrated 100 years of football. 
uh, it's been a, it was a great last few days and just just talk about the program Marino Casson being honored I saw some of the video on social media a great turnout and a lot of fun was had by all a lot a lot of, a lot of great members of uh, Marino Casson uh, uh, Charles and 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 just to just to just to, to see the tribute uh, with him. Uh, being honored here on campus and, and some of the old players coming back and, and just being there uh, during the tribute. Man, I think it was wonderful. Uh, he's a great legendary coach that will always be remembered here forever. Um, and like I said, you know, in the past, that he, he recruited me out of high school. So, um, But he's always been remembered as a coach and had a chance to visit and talk with him a few times uh, during the SWAC championship in Houston when they had it there. Uh, so it was, it, was, it was fun and it was great. Then on Friday, uh, one of the our one of all corns greats, your brother, the late Steve Air McNair, was the naming of the Safe Center, the Steve Air to McNair Michelle McNair Safe Center, in a uh, ceremony that was held on campus. Uh, family and friends were there, and the project began in 2019 with the celebration of McNair's life and the retiring of his jersey. You were there for that, Coach. Just give us your thoughts. Great honor. Great honor. I thought the university did a great job in, in, in putting together um, a, a, the honor to the safe center at them in terms of um, the building. Uh, the safe center has been, been here for a minute, and uh, it's a place where the, the students go and, and do tutoring and, and do their classwork and the computer lab and stuff. So, uh, it's a great honor um, for him to, for that building to be named after uh, Steve and Michelle. If if your brother were alive today to see that, what would he say? Oh, he's you never know, smile, Charles, and, and that's the way he he always is. He's a lot of smiles and and the things that that um you know very very humble uh, to the fact that you know he appreciate uh, the things that the university is doing in his honor. All right, Coach, so let's get into Jackson State. Let's get into the big game coming up at 1 o'clock on Saturday. We know what Jackson State has done. Jackson State won the East. They beat Southern and come from behind fashion. You look at their season, midway point, coming off a of bye week. They went to Huntsville and just took out Alabama A&M 61-15. And since that time, Coach, they're a battle-tested ball club. 7-7 seven, seven with Bama State at one point in that game. Trailed Bethune-Cookman 9 nothing. They trailed uh, Mississippi Valley at one point in that game. Texas Southern, uh, they tr it was 21 all in the fourth quarter. And, of course, they uh, trailed by 10 to Southern against Valley. And, of course, Cedric Foster talked about it a little bit. Uh, Jackson State only had... 30 yards on 23 carries in that game. So this team's been tested. So you look at you look at this game, you look at Coach Sanders, you look at his two sons, one on offense, a quarterback, one on defense. What is it about this Jackson State team that, that you've seen this season and why they are where they are this season? As you can say on both sides of the ball, they're a very talented group of, uh, of football players. And uh, and what they're doing uh, schematically is something that they, they within what they do. Uh, they've been they've been good at it for the last few weeks. Um, been winning ball games at the last moment. Know how to win. Uh, that's the biggest thing. So uh, when you talk about a good good football program, I think that's one of them um, in terms of what they do on the football field. So uh, we just have to be able to match the intensity of uh, of everything they're gonna present to us, whether it's the, on offensive, defense, or special teams, uh, to the max uh, and the things that we that we need to do to win this ball game. You're talking about a freshman quarterback in Shadur Sanders, and we've seen a couple of good freshmen, Coach. This is the third one we're going to be looking at. Bo Grambling, body at Texas Southern, and Shadur Sanders. You know, coaches talk about getting players from the transfer portal, you know, veteran guys. But, yeah, we've seen three – we're going to see three freshmen uh, at that position. And Shadur, 2,600 yards, uh, five interceptions, 25 touchdowns. You're a quarterback yourself. What do you see in Shador Sanders? He, he's great. He's a great quarterback. He's spinning the ball well, Charles. He gets to the open guys, and and also too, he's good with his legs as well. So uh, we got a job cut out for us, and I think we up for the challenge in terms of uh, what they're going to present on offense and and Shador Sanders and uh, and and stop from making plays. So uh, we just got we just got to battle and and make sure schematically we can we can anchor them guys down to 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 not being so successful. What is it about this uh, Jackson State running attack averaging 3.2 yards per attempt? They got three guys uh, that can get it done in the backfield. 
Yeah, they're going to run the ball, Charles. They're not going to stop running the ball. Not, it's not going to be a uh, throw-happy offense. They're going to continue to try to run the ball. Um, we just got to be there and, and be gaps on it uh, to be able to stop the run and, and in terms of what they're going to do. What about this uh, JSU defense that concerns you? Oh, it's very solid, very solid. I got a good defensive end in Houston. I got a great middle linebacker in Miller. Uh, they got a lot of great players in the secondary. You know, you talk about Sanders in the secondary as well. So um, we got we got a battle cry, Charles. We got we got to make sure that we we doing everything solid um, to to master intensity of them and and the thing in turn what they're gonna do defensively. I think schematic. We'll put together a good game plan to kind of kind of offset some of the things that they're trying to do to us. Um, in terms of that, Charles, we just got to be prepared, and and I, th I know we will be prepared to play on Saturday. Uh, for a full 60 minutes. One of the things I'm eyeing is special teams, especially punt and kickoff coverage. They have a kid at Newman who's averaging in punt returns 17 yards per punt return and a touchdown. They have a kid in Bolden who's averaging 34 yards per kickoff return. So we really have to have our antennas up on punt and kickoff return coverage. That's exactly right, Charles. That's, that's why it's so important to what we do uh, on kickoff and punt uh, to get the ball where it needs to be in terms of our coverage uh, teams and going down and making a tackle. But we kind of know what we're doing all the time while those guys are back there uh, trying to return punts and what, and what they're trying to get to as well. So uh, just coaching those guys up on special team. We had a, a big special team practice this morning in terms of, of all the special team stuff. So uh, we, we're going to be prepared to, to, to be able to cover and make plays on special teams. Some of my uh, in-laws are trying to get some tailgate spots for the game today uh, at the ticket office. There are no more tailgate spots available for the game. All the parking is gone, basically. Uh, there's going to be a big crowd, a big game. And for us, all we can do is what we can do. Win on Saturday and pray you would have to beat Valley uh, in a couple of weeks on the 27th. So if we just do our part, Coach, then, you know, the rest could take care of itself. You're exactly right, Charles, and, and that's what we intend to do. Uh, go to Jackson and put a put a good eight brand of football on the field and, and make these guys play hard with effort as, as they've been doing throughout this whole year and try to come out with this victory on Saturday. I tell you what, there's going to be a lot of energy in the stadium, probably 60,000, I, I imagine. Tickets are going fast. Parking is gone. Tickets, tailgate is gone. RV parking is gone. All that other stuff is gone. Tickets are going pretty briskly. And uh, it, it's just a huge game. And, you know, what does the Alcorn-Jackson rivalry, you know, mean, mean to you, Coach? I mean, it's, you know, all can I just talk about it all the time. You know, Manuel Barnes remembers games back in the <laughs> Walter Payton was running the football. You know, what, what does the rivalry mean to you? It's been a rivalry for a long time, Charles. And, uh, you know, back in the days when I was playing and Steve was playing, and it's been a rivalry forever. You talk about this old bowl, the Capital City Classic. You talk about when it was the Southwest Airline and, <laughs> and all that stuff, man. It's, yeah. it's, been a, it's been a classic forever, and it's been a great, great game forever. So it will continue to be that way. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing is that I talked to these young men this morning in the team meeting. So, you know, a lot of them haven't seen 60,000 people before. Um, but it'll be a test to some of the young guys that's going to be on the field. But uh, just preparing them for what they have never seen in the stands. And hopefully when they come out for pregame and all the jitterbugs will be gone and, and they'll be ready to play, which they, I know they will be. Um, but the biggest thing is we got a ball game to play on Saturday. And, and we've got to have that talent business when we come out come out charge and the only thing that we're gonna see in front of us is is Jackson State Tigers. Um everything else is the noise is blocked out and, and we totally focus on the task at hand and trying to win this ball game on Saturday. A Braves win, that means the Panthers would have to beat Valley. That game is next Saturday, November twenty seventh. Prairie would have to win that game. Prairie plays Texas A and M Saturday morning at eleven o'clock. So it'll be interesting to see there how Coach Dooley plays his hand as uh, they go 63 miles up the road to take on Texas A&M. Coach, we appreciate it. Let's go get them. Uh, go Braves. That'll do it for the Fred McNair program. We appreciate all the calls. Kermit, Cedric Foster, Marquise, we appreciate all the texts and tweets. We'll do it all over again next Monday night. I'm Charles Eppin, our producer, Cedric Tillman, and Jamario Brooks. We'll talk to you next Monday night. So long.